Good evening, everyone. It's a great pleasure for me to <coughs> give a little talk to the Your Excellency, Madam Saroja Sersena, our High Commissioner for Sri Lanka in the UK, Lords, Your Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, Deputy High Commissioner, Mr. Samantha Patirana, and the members of the High Commission. Today, we are celebrating the Vesak. It is the most important religious day in the Buddhist calendar. When we celebrate the Vesak, we celebrate the life of the Buddha, his birth, enlightenment, and his parinibbana, or the passing away. <clears throat> his princely life was changed when he saw an old man, sick man, and a dead body. As an, uh, had seen uh, an ascetic monk in the forest. As a consequence of this event, the young prince's attention became completely focused on becoming an ascetic monk by renouncing all his worldly possessions and status, learning to live without comfort in the forest and pursuing the purpose of an ascetic life. It was a turning point of his life. It was a sudden and dramatic transformation. He became a monk and for six years the ascetic Gautama followed very rigid, austere practices while residing in the basin of river Ganges. He experienced all the meditation techniques and yet did not gain expected spiritual progress. Finally, after much patience and perseverance, he discovered a new spiritual line and came to the middle path. By following the middle path in his daily life, he attained enlightenment beneath the Bodhi tree in Bodh Gaya. <clears throat> After his enlightenment, he decided, dedicated his life, traveling from village to village, from city to city, sharing his wisdom as a solution for inner peace. During 45 years of his long ministry, he met kings and peasants, poor people and bankers, children and ascetics, and other religious monks and philosophers. He gave thousands of sermons, had many dialogues and discussions. Buddha was asked thousands of questions and he answered. All his sermons have been preserved in their pristine purity as Tripitaka, the holy text. Before his passing away, the Buddha asked monks, do you have any doubts about my teaching? All the monks were silent. Then the Buddha said, if you are silent because of respect to the teacher, then you can ask your friend to ask, uh, ask the question on your behalf. Again, all the monks were very silent. Then the Buddha gave his last advice. All component things are impermanent. You take care, monks. Buddha's main concern was human suffering. The central concept of his teaching is suffering. He had diagnosed the cause of suffering, discovered the cure, and prescribed the path for the cessation of suffering. For this purpose, the practical solution was the middle path. not any extremes as prescribed. Therefore, it can be practiced in any society. Buddha's ancient middle path consists of the exercising of morality, concentration, and wisdom, which all conducive for a spiritual progress of the individual, and all lead to cessation of suffering and finally the attainment of enlightenment. Buddhism is humanism. It focuses all human problems. For the welfare of the society, Buddha had established 
a month older and nuns older as well. He had ordained everyone who was capable of understanding his teaching regardless of, any, of class and creed. During his time, women's freedom was very limited, yet the Buddha ordained women. Buddha said, man is not noble by birth, but by action only. In briefly, the Buddha said, he passed his message, don't do evil, cultivate good, purify your mind. This is the admonition of the Buddha. During the time of the Buddha, and throughout history, there have been many hundreds of wars and many millions of people killed. A good nonviolent solution can be found within ourselves, the Buddha uttered. Hatred is indeed never appeased by hatred in this world. It is appeased, by, it is appeased only by loving kindness. This is an eternal law, Dhammapada. Although the Buddha was born more than 200, 600 years ago, and his teaching is also practiced throughout the first two millennia, his teaching is still relevant today more than before. His teaching gives us great solace, and meditation is widely practiced as a remedy for stress and depression. Today, on this holiest day in the Buddhist calendar, we estimate there are 500 million practicing Buddhists in the world. In this country, there are 300,000 Buddhists from various backgrounds and cultures. They all celebrate the Vesak day, the Buddha's day. We pray, may all be well, happy, and peaceful. We pray, may the world be free from this dreadful COVID virus. And may you all be well and peaceful. Thank you very much. I wish you a very happy Vesak day. ಸಂಗೀತ <laughs> <laughs>